If you grew up in the 1970s, you cannot help but remember what a splash the movie Jaws made. It was the first ever summer blockbuster that had people both lining up around the block to see it and petrified of sharks after they emerged from a screening. Ever wonder what happened behind the scenes in the making of that film? Well, we no longer have to wonder. The Shark is Broken is a new play at the Royal Alexandra Theatre in Toronto, and it tells much of that story from the point of view of actor Robert Shaw, who played the crazy shark hunting Quint. Ian Shaw plays his father and co-wrote the play as well, and he joins us now here in studio. It's a great pleasure to meet you. Great to meet you, Steve. I want to start with a picture. Mr. Director, can we see this picture, please? That's you and your dad. How old are you here? Well, I'm probably about six, seven. And you are one of how many siblings? There's 10 of us. So yeah. how much of this guy did you see when you were growing up? Well, quite a lot because mm -hmm. we, uh, you know, we traipsed around with him. So, um, you know, I remember spending time with him, you know, on, on Jaws and uh, on, on lots of other films, Force 10 from Navarone. You know, we went, we were in Spain with him. Yeah. Most people who have parents don't really appreciate what their parents do for a living and don't really care. Did you appreciate what your father did for a living and care? Probably not. Yeah. No, um, I took it for granted. I felt, you know, when you're a kid, you just assume that this is absolutely normal. Um, <laughs> so, yes, I, I think I probably uh, took it for granted. You didn't know that he was a huge movie star? I don't think I knew what that meant. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. What prompted you to want to do something artistically creative with the whole Jaws story and the behind the scenes of it? Well, that's a long story. Um, I think the, the, the moment, the beginning bit was looking in the mirror when I had a moustache for a, for a part and I thought that I looked very like Quint. And then that kind of triggered other thoughts that I had had. I'd always loved Jaws. Mm. And um, you would not have been old enough to see it when it first came out. Well, I I saw it too young. Yeah, okay. but I, I I saw it before my dad died. Okay. Um, because I remember having a nightmare, you know, with mm -hmm. the sharks going around the bed and asking, calling out for him to save me. Hmm. Yeah. In terms of the inception of the piece, Carl Gottlieb's book, The Jaws Log, mm -hmm. was um, a fascinating read, just generally about filmmaking. I think. Then I met Richard in the 90s, uh, Dreyfus. Mm -hmm. He was auditioning for Hamlet, um, directing that in, in Birmingham in England, and I introduced myself. And Did anything was click? Well, I was expecting him to give me a, a hug or, or something like that. What'd you get? I, it looked like I'd punched him in the stomach. <laughs> yeah. So. Did you infer from that that there, there maybe was some friction behind the scenes with your dad that made him unlovable to you? I, I walked out of that audition and I thought, you know, I need to uh, find out more about this. And so read Carl Gottlieb's book mm -hmm. and it, that revealed an extraordinary relationship between the two of them. Hmm. I'm going to go off the path for a second here. That's great. When, when, whenever I go to a show, I try to read nothing about it ahead of time. I try to know as little about it as possible so the whole thing unfolds on me like a big surprise and a, a you know, it's, it's a great revelation. So when I went to this show, I did not know that you were playing your dad. I just thought you were playing Quint. It did not occur to me. And then you walk out on stage and oh my God, you know you are the spitting image of the guy, right? Yes. Is this how you normally look or? Oh no, I mean I- This is I've... all for the part. It is all for the part. I think in my local village in England, they think I'm nuts because some of them have no idea um, that I'm doing this. Um, and they just see this guy with a moustache and I mean, we see it here, burns. but it, it, yeah. Can we put this shot up? I mean, it's, that's you in the play and it's freaky mm. how much you look like your dad. Yes, I mean, that was one of the factors, I think. That made you want to do it. Yes. Well. Again, with all of these things, like I'm saying, meeting Richard, reading the Jaws log, looking like my dad, finding, um, you know, I, I mean, I loved Jaws and thought there was a story to it. I'd also done, um, I'd also played Colonel Tibbets in a documentary about Hiroshima. And 
uh, I remember at the time writing to the paper and you know trying to promote the show and saying, isn't this a, a, an unusual coincidence um, that I would be playing a character who was picking up the bomb my father was dropping it off on the USS Indianapolis, hmm. you know. Um, there was no interest whatsoever in that story, wow. which irritated me. Wow. So I, you know, because, you know, I thought that was interesting. So um, all of these various, you know, ingredients were coming together. But when it came to it, you know, it was me with a pint with a friend saying, I've got this mad idea almost hoping that they would shoot it down because I was so nervous of the complexity of the tone of, of what we might try and achieve. Well, let's get into that, shall we? How, how old was your dad when he made the movie? He was 47. How old are you now? I'm 52. So pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. Uh, I don't know how to ask this other than just to come right out and ask it. How odd is it to play your father? Well, good question. Less odd now I've done it. Um, but in approaching it, uh, pretty terrifying and weird and, and that, you know, it's not so much the playing of him. I guess it was the writing of him. You know, I loved him. I didn't want to you know, uh, embarrass him unnecessarily. I didn't want to shame my family, you know, but we were going to paint him warts and all. And you do. Yeah. So that was, you know, that's why I was very reluctant and, you know, as an actor generally, you try to avoid association with a, a, a you know, a parent actor who is mm. a, a huge star. So, you know, there were all sorts of warnings and I, I felt quite sick, you know, at the prospect at, at the beginning. Have you heard from siblings, for example, who've seen the play and say, I really don't like the way you portrayed Dad there? They haven't said that. I mean, what's my family's extraordinary, I have to say, and I'm very grateful to, um, you know, my brothers and sisters and my stepmother for their enormous support. Um, they are in, they are they are incredible. It's a sort of universal, um, you know, seal of approval on this particular thing. And I and it would it wouldn't have been possible without that. Hmm. Uh, another bit of a tacky question here, but do you wish your dad were still alive to see you do this? I wish he was still alive, but I I it, it wouldn't. It's one of those sort of quantum physics things. It couldn't possibly exist. Um, if he was alive, because when? it's, to some extent, even though he is presented, you know, imperfectly, there's a lot of love in there mm. and a lot of feeling of loss, you know. Mm. Let's take our next picture here, if we can, Sheldon. This is, this is the picture of Bruce. Bruce is the name they gave to the shark. As the title of the play suggests, was the shark always broken when they made this movie and therefore lots of time to sit around and <laughs> make mischief? It was very, you know, it, it had, um, they tested it in, in fresh water. Mm. So then when it came to putting it in salt water, <laughs> you know, the whole thing had to be reconfigured. Um, <laughs> you know, and they had other technical issues. At one point it um, plunged to the bottom and, and got a big dent in its chin. <laughs> Um, they had three of them actually, so they had hmm. they had a, a one that you could see whole, and then they had two sides, as it were, hmm. uh, running on these complex rails. It's almost like a sort of Victorian, you know, uh, sea pier. Hmm. Um, yeah. So they they. I mean, Spielberg was so audacious to attempt to film on the sea. It hadn't been done before, mm. to my knowledge. Mm. You know, yeah, he wasn't big... using some fake back lot. This was the no. real thing. And you can, f and you can see it in the, in the film, yeah. I think, that the, the authenticity of it. Mm -hmm. your, your dad, at least the way you have portrayed it, seemed very unhappy much of the time he made this movie, right? Fighting with Richard Dreyfuss and just not, um, 
battling some demons as well at the same time? Yes. Is that fair to say? I think it is fair to say. I mean, what's very interesting about him as a person is that he's quite mercurial mm. in that he would be unhappy and, you know, I don't think... He, uh, he didn't think much of the script initially. Mm -hmm. I think he came round afterwards, but... Um, you know, and he was obviously, you know, bored and drinking too much and, and, and whatnot. But he did have a great sense of humour and, and he, 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 would, he would still laugh at the situation, I think. Do you, do you think he ever came around to appreciate how much of a megastar this movie made him in ways that none of the other work he did, which was in some ways equal in terms of his acting chops, ever did. I think he was shocked at the, at the reaction. I mean, uh, you know, I think they all were, you know. Um, they went to the cinema to, to, to... I mean, I think the producers felt that... Uh, Zanuck and Brown felt that the shark might be laughed at. Mm -hmm. um, so I think everyone was a little bit taken aback about how successful it was. And, you know, then Robert was invited to the Oscars, you know, and was presenting there, and then he was able to command much higher fees. Mm. He did uh, uh, say at one point that he, th he realised that Spielberg was special as it went on. Because he was a kid when he made this. He was. I think he was mm. 25. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, 25, <laughs> 26. And, um, yeah, but I think Robert did... You know, he, he at one point they ran out of money and he deferred his wages because he wanted Spielberg to finish the film. Nice. So he, he did come around, I think. Now, your first interaction, as you've told us, with Richard Dreyfus was not great. Do you know whether or not he's seen this? I don't know that. So you don't know what he thinks about the way he's being portrayed in this? No. You haven't heard I, from others? No. I mean, I, I, I think he might be aware of it, but... Um, I don't know that, and I would love to. I would love to um, to meet him again and to talk to him. And uh, yeah, I hope he does um, come. You know, because we're hoping to. You know, that it has a future life after this. Mm -hmm. So I would. Be, I'd be honoured to meet him. You know, I love. I love him as an actor. Well, he's great. Been great many things. And Roy Scheider, alas, is gone. So he 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 doesn't know anything about this. So no. he's the guy. Yes, he's the guy. I want to show another picture of your dad, if we can, here. Sheldon, if you would. Your dad was a villain in the James Bond movie From Russia With Love, and he wasn't playing a crazy shark hunter in this one, or a limp gangster as he did in The Sting. He plays a young, evil stud. <laughs> he was quite a stud. When you see him like that, looking so young and powerful, what comes to mind? Well, the fight with him and Sean. Was amazing. Um, yeah. That was a the scene. They really went for it. Mm. Um, you know, they ended up... It wasn't like with Richard. They ended up as great friends. <laughs> um, I think Robert introduced Sean to golf. <laughs> um, so, yes, a, a different uh, dynamic between those two. I mean, I think with Robert and Richard... Uh, I think... You know, Richard says that there was a lot of affection privately <laughs> between them. Um, and I think Robert was sort of trying to school Richard, perhaps slightly in a clumsy way, um, because he wanted Richard to be, you know, more focused on, on the work rather than on, the, on fame. Hmm. Well, if you judge it by the finished product, you can't help but love what the two of them did together because the finished product is fantastic. The chemistry is amazing. It is. Yeah. As is your play, The Shark is Broken, and it's at the Royal Alex until the 6th of November, and we're really grateful that it has enabled you, Ian Shaw, to come here and talk to us about your play and your dad. So thank you. Well, thank you so much, Stephen. Appreciate it. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.